here. So this is the what we're calling the orthographic and isometric at half scale. And the handout looks like this. And once again, what we're trying to do is solve this puzzle. And this is an example of one that's already been solved. Uh, essentially drawing an isometric from the three views. Okay, and that's the one you have to solve. So it's, um, it's not too bad. Um, there are a couple of steps involved, which is that from this, you have to enlarge 150% these three views, and then these three, and then for these, you have to reduce down 50% of these new views, okay? So, uh, so at foot scale, it looks something like this, and, um, and this is enlarged. Right? 150%. So once you do that part, you need to do this part, which is the isometric, at 50% of this. Okay. Um, let's see what we got. So I, uh, you definitely should use your T square for this. I have my little T square. Um, and triangles, and really you just need mainly the uh, uh, can you see it? the 3061. Okay. So um, the position of that object here is going to be looking at from this angle once again. Okay. So that's, this is the plan view, this is the top, right? So we're going to be looking at, at this edge being the first thing in front, okay, what's called the leading edge. And, uh, which means that when you look at the object, uh, since this is this view, it repre it's representing this edge here, and I think this edge here. I'm giving a little hint there of what the thing looks like. Um, okay, so this edge right here is these two lines. Uh, actually, I'll give you one more hint. It's this line. Okay. So I talked about. Actually, I went over this last. Monday, but since I wasn't taping, I'm going over it again. Uh, my very low-tech method for enlarging, you know, if I have something that's two and a half, which is what you have in your object, I mean, this is like really easy, but, so if that's two and a half, and I don't know how to figure out one and a half times, well, I measure, I split it in half, one and a quarter, and then I just bring over one and a quarter. And sometimes I do this because, you know, when fractions get a little complicated. And so that's now my new one and a half times, which happens to be three and three quarters. Okay? So that's like if you're lost, if you're like stranded on a desert island and you don't have an architect scale, you know. But you have a piece of paper, you can still, you know, you can still measure with a piece of paper by, um, By doing this, right? If that's how long it is, I can always fold that, and I get my half, and then I just move the other half over here, and then I mark it. Okay. All right. So, um, so these pages are just sketches. Again, giving you a little hint. Um, one, one way to look at this is to try to imagine a glass box or a box in which, on the three faces of which you draw these things. Now, that's not going to work completely, but at least it's going to get you started. So what I was doing here, I was drawing this picture on this side, essentially. And then I could do the same with this side, and I could draw it here, but then you know, so you start seeing maybe some relationships. It, it might be useful, 
um, at some point you're going to have to carve in to find out what it really looks like. Okay. And this is So it's really kind of like uh, organizing your sort of visual thinking, so to speak, and saying that, you know, this is a beginning here, and I'm looking at the object, and it looks, some parts look a little funny, right? There's a U-shape here, so I'm wondering what that is. Uh, there's definitely a sloped area right here, um, and that's from the right side. So this is my right side. This is my front. That's my top. Um, so things you can do is, well, even if you don't know how it is precisely, you can say, okay, these lines look like they're in front. Okay, so I can start breaking up my uh, piece into these verticals. Okay, and then there's this other connecting line. I can say, oh, okay, so you would measure maybe this dimension here that dimension there. Now remember you're doing everything at half scale. Right? So once I have these two, then I can draw that line and I can, you know, I don't know yet how it's going to be exactly, but it's a line. And that angle in isometric you have, you have to find by, um, by measuring here and measuring there and then connecting the two. Okay. This is just the dimensions. Two and a quarter by three and three quarters are going to be your 150 percent of that front view. Okay, and then this will be half of it. Once again, oh yeah, let's add the labels: uh, top view, front view, and right side view. shape, again, if I just look at this, I'm not really sure how it is, but I could say, okay, I've got this line, you know, and so I could say, I can measure this, if I draw my box here, I can measure that, and maybe I can find that spot, and then where, where would this be? Um, you have to measure it either this way, and then maybe this way, and where they meet. Uh, so you measure there. You bring it over, measure this way, bring it over, and maybe it's there. Okay? Maybe. I don't want to give you too many, so otherwise I draw it for you, but... Uh, once again, isometric. Okay? So, 30-30. Um, and do use your uh, T-square or another triangle. Uh, sim um, simply because it's a lot easier if I do this. Um, to then use my triangle like that. Okay, and then I just flip it. Also allows me to do, well I don't have any horizontals at all really. Uh, but I do have verticals, lots of them, so I can do those quickly. using the T square as a guide. This just gives you some more information again about the... Yeah, that would be a full scale. So there it's going to be a 50%. Okay. Uh, this is actually just some general tips. 
once again, uh, do a hand sketch. Try to solve it by hand. Um, and keep your lines parallel. Um, whatever lines are parallel in the original are going to be parallel um, in the isometric, no matter how you slice it, okay? So, for example, uh, these lines are all parallel, so they're going to be parallel in your, in your example. Uh, let's see, these two are not, so definitely they won't be parallel. Let's see if there's another example. Um, and these two are not parallel, right? So they're not going to be parallel in the object. But all of these lines, this, 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 that, that, okay? They're all going to be, in your example, they're all going to be coming out this way. And all the verticals always, always, always stay vertical. Okay. Um, use uh, tracing paper. Very, very useful. Um, it might be helpful to uh, use projection lines to kind of figure out how things relate to each other. So again, these are gone in your CAD programs, but um, they used to be very useful. Um, so for example, these lines, if I extend it, it matches this point. Oh, okay, I wonder what that is. Uh, and then here, the way it would actually connect would be in this plane, like the little folded, folded window panes that I showed you. If I extend this, um, that's how these points relate to each other, okay? This is actually a little nifty uh, device to enlarge something. Again, if you're stranded on a desert island, okay, it's just a method for enlarging um, a shape using sets of uh, um, parallel lines. So if I have um, this shape, which is our original. You're not, you're not going to really do this because it's, but, but again, if you wanted to do, you know, if it was a complicated shape, it could be useful. Uh, so the first thing that I do here is I know, let's say I just know one dimension, or rather, I only measure one. So I make this one and a half times, right? Okay, so if I extend the base, and then I project a vertical line. So the question is, where is that? Okay, that's, that spot is going to be, if this was inscribed in a rectangle, I just extend the diagonal of that rectangle. Like that. Okay. And when you do that, uh, any shape that's going to be falling on that diagonal is going to be proportional to the original shape. So if that's 150%, the half point is likely going to be 125%. Okay? So that gives me this point, and now I can connect this other one. Right? Parallel. Uh, and now let's just see how I can show... Uh, let's say this point. I mean, here it's almost intuitive that if I have this point right here, if I take a line from the corner here and I project it, it's almost projecting another diagonal that I get that spot right there. Um, but I wanted to show something else. I wanted to show how any point, let's say there is a device here, okay? So the question is, where is this spot in the larger uh, shape. Let me just draw the larger shape so that. Okay. Uh, so where would this be exactly there? And one way to do it is you draw two sets of lines from the two corners of the original. So if I do the first line like this, uh, let's see if I do this right. Yeah. And then from oops from this spot. Go like this. And then I 
do the same uh, direction and I take it instead from this corner. Okay, so essentially I've just projected that point exactly in the larger shape by simply doing a parallel line. So parallel lines are really, really useful. Okay, that's just a little aside on enlarging a shape. using the architect scale. By the way, I did um, put up the little video on that, um, little demo. And we talked about this also, which is that in some shapes, um, a surface area that may be shown in some of the views is actually uh, represented by a line in the other views, and vice versa. So that in, other, in our example, it's likely that this area right here is going to be represented either by a line in both of the other views or by another surface and a line. So there's at least another view that is like pretty much a line. So I'm just going to highlight for you, these are the same thing. Okay, in the right side, it's just a line in the top and the front is the surface. And the fact that the bottom one is shorter, right, shrunk, uh, gives you a hint that it is, you know, a slope. Um, oh yeah, here it is. Okay, I've already shown it. Last image just shows a, just a layout of where the, all, all the parts are going to fall. Okay, so um, so it pretty much gives you total dimensions at least. Uh, uh, actually, it doesn't quite. Uh, it, it tells you the spacing so that you can lay it out and they're going to be centered. Okay, and then I just give you this spot right here, two and a quarter from the edge. Uh, and then align it here. So this is arbitrary where it is. It could really, doesn't have to be exactly there, but uh, just to do it nicely framed. Okay, so that's the orthographic and isometric at half scale.